Romaga Pili, Boylan Fulcher, Royal Road, Kalair and Shop, I imagine. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here this morning. There's many, many colleagues here from DCU, but friends from outside the, outside the university. Uh, but can I particularly welcome our visiting professor, uh, Professor Brian Cano from the University of Leicester, who has been a huge aid to us in developing our strategy over the years, and then headhunting indeed. Um, for the whole area of digital learning, you see, Bronya, you're very welcome, and it's very, very appropriate that you be with us here this morning. What's, there were many remarkable things about this morning, um, but one of these is the size of the crowd here today. I think if uh, one said that at 9 a.m. in the middle of August, and a sunny day in August, uh, no less, that we would have uh, over 120 people here squeezed into the gallery, I think people would say, well, we'll go back taking the tablets, Brian. And also, uh, thank you all for being here. It's a pity the Minister for Education and Skills isn't here to see this level of commitment and engagement. I think it's, uh, it's very impressive indeed. Um, can I also particularly welcome a uh, colleague, Professor Dara Kyo, uh, President of uh, Colossus de Forek, I think. Um, the coming together of the various institutions, uh, St. Patrick's College in Congre, Matter Day Institute, uh, Church of Ireland College of Education with DCU um, to create among many things but a new institute of education of international significance is very pertinent to today's event as well. So I'm delighted that Dara could be, could be with us and I think other colleagues from other institutions may well be joining us. I think of uh, Dr. Anne Lodge, I think is here as well, Dr. Andrew McGrady. Dr. Andrew McGrady, oh, Andy, you're there as well. Apologies, I missed you from a uh, director of Madrid Day Institute of Education and I think. Dr. Ann Lodge plans to be with us as well, so like, all our partners are here uh, to see this. Um, today is a very significant day for us. I mean, I think it's, it's linked to the fact that we're on the cusp of developing, I think, what would be the most transformative entity in education in Ireland through this new Institute of Education. But it's, it's, a, it's a clear recognition of DCU's commitment to 21st century education, to the future of education itself. So while today is, is, is about revealing a brand, announcing a brand, it is much more than that. A brand without substance is simply a shell, but today is about much more commitment to the learning experience and to the global nature of the learning experience itself. Uh, those of you inside the university will know that our, our vision for the university is about a, glo a globally engaged university. And uh, this, this is particularly true in terms of the modalities of education the affordances coming from digital technologies. Today is about us embracing the affordances, the power, the strength of digital technologies to offer a quality education from DCU, no matter where the student is in the world, whether that student is on campus or in any of the far from places around the world where this, that student can be linked into DCU itself. Um, as many of you would know, online learning is not a new development at DCU. Uh, OSCO, which has been uh, DCU's online and distance education platform was established in 1982, so we're over 30 years in this space itself and has provide, provided many thousands of adults, primarily from all over Ireland, with, with an excellent third level education and we have wonderful stories of where the graduates of, that, of those programs uh, went on, went and where they went on to make huge impact. But this is about embracing the future and uh, we always felt that the OSCO brand itself, and Seamus has confirmed this, was, it was a difficult one to a sell and tell the story of overseas and more and more we're, we're, we're having an impact with our education and research on an international basis and uh, that was one of the reasons for the change. Um, I took over as president in, in just over four years ago and certainly one of my objectives at that time was to actually maintain DCU's reputation as an innovator in education itself and I remember within the first six months I met with uh, then Deputy President uh, Professor Anne Scott who's also as registered chair of our education committee. And we discussed this and I said, I shared my vision of what we wanted to do and I asked Anne to take on the role of actually developing a strategy for this. And quite a number of you in the audience are part of the group she established with the horribly unmarket friendly name of VOLG, the Virtual Online Learning Group. But anyway, the VOLG did, despite the brand, did fantastic work and produced a, a comprehensive report and submitted that to us and we approved that uh, at executive uh, about 18 months ago. But within the significant recommendations in that report was one, to establish a centre of excellence at DCU in digital learning, to appoint a high profile chair of international standing in the area of digital learning, to integrate all our expertise in this space into one centre, 
and to develop a distinctive brand which would have global significance. All of these, with today's launch, have now been addressed and I want to, uh, Anne, as you know, is moving on to a position at, uh, in Liverpool um, and I want to wish her and thank her for her role in this, but also the many members of the Bolg team that are, that are in the audience here this morning. You also have the satisfaction, unlike many reports nationally and internationally, your recommendations are being implemented or actually having a huge difference. In our strategic plan launched in 2012, September 2012, Transforming Lives and Society, again, we followed up on the recommendations and a core element was this commitment to establish a centre of excellence in digital learning, towards we're supporting pioneering technology enhanced learning to revolutionise the learning experience for both campus-based education and off-campus education for DC. That's the very wording from this. And last year, you recall we were delighted with the, with the Minister and Lord David Putnam to launch the National Institute of Digital Learning and particularly delighted uh, to appoint Ireland's first Professor of Digital Learning as Director of the Institute, Professor Mark Brown. And I have to really pay credit to Mark. Uh, I mean, he came with high recommendations from, from Grania and we would be blaming Grania if, if he didn't live up to those. He's exceeded those expectations and I have to say he's had a transformative impact since he arrived in the University and I think along with his colleagues, uh, Mark Glynn and Seamus Fox, and, and all of the teams behind us, but have really been responsible for develop, developing all of this and bringing us to where we are today. So thank you, Mark, for that. I'm delighted that your wife could join us here this morning as well. Thank you for that. So today's launch really plays a key part in our continuous and ongoing efforts at, to be a hub for digital learning, to create a blended learning experience for say, all our students, whether they be on or out of campus. We want to combine the strengths, and we will never renege on this, the strengths of face-to-face -face learning, particularly for younger learners, with the absolute strengths of technology enhanced learning, using all the affordances and strengths of digital technologies, which continue to develop. We certainly will see a future where adaptive learning or personalized learning will actually have a huge impact on learning at all levels, and begin to see that. So apart from enhancing the learning experience for DCU students, whether they be on or off campus. We want to be a pioneer in developing uh, new areas of research, but also policy development nationally that will influence the learning experience right across the country itself. Today we are launching a new brand encompassing all DCU programs offered in an online format to students studying off campus, wherever they be, whether, say, whether that be nationally or internationally. Um, you know that we already have been engaging internationally with some success. This time last year we were celebrating uh, the work of Yvonne Crotty and Margaret Farr, the JESSE program, where we delivered a very successful program, had 180 graduates uh, across 12 nations in the African Union. Uh, this, this was about capacity development uh, using online learning. I went out to the graduation ceremony and was hugely impressed by the impact. You saw that actually the quality of developed programs here at DCU could impact on emerging leaders across 12 nations in one of the most uh, difficult regions of the world itself. That to me really reinforced the importance of us moving from something which was entirely nationally focused to something with global impact and that we as a young dynamic university could make that impact and uh, be true to the, the mission in our uh, strategic plan of transforming lives and societies through education, research and, and, and innovation. So I think it's time to reveal the new brand. Those of you on Twitter would have seen leaks this morning of this, but anyway, can I ask uh, Mark to... Uh, <laughs> so DCU Connected is the new brand itself, and uh, Mark worked very closely with uh, Theresa Murray and her team, Communications and Marketing, and mar marketing colleagues at the University to come up with this. Um, there's a tagline goes with this as well, Mark, that there's a, a quality education wherever you are. I think that's, that's an important add-on to this. They connected, and I did my Latin studies last night, a kind of comes from the Latin connect era, uh, about binding together, and I won't get into religious hymns at this st stage in the morning itself. But it is, it is about connecting learners wherever they are in the world to, to the university itself. You can see the play on the, the ed as an edX that other people have used as well. But I think this notion of a word that explains exactly what it is, it does exactly what it says in the tin to students all around the world. You are connected to DCU wherever you are and you, you can uh, access all we develop in education from that. But it's a quality education 
and wherever you are in the world through the affordance of di digital technology, you can connect to this DCU education itself. So we are extremely pleased, we ran this by senior managers, extremely pleased by the words, the message, the brand itself, what it says of DCU, how consistent it is with the DCU logo itself. All of these bits come together to give us an, a new message that will go out as a, a formal marketing brand from next Monday. So the, the commitment to, to attract uh, students into these programs um, will, will start to actually manifest itself from next Monday itself. So in launching this brand itself, consistent with the fo focus on the learner experience, we've chosen a number of students to be the public face of brand itself. So there's a whole additional marketing area going with this. And these are our connected learners here. So you've got Deirdre, Michael and Patrice, um, and you'll see some of their stories now and some of the videos that, that follow. But I think again, you start to see how this connected brand starts, starts to work itself. Um, I think the video, can the video play at this stage? Perhaps we could just do that. Okay. Oh yes, we could do the banners as well, so you can see the, the rest of the marketing. <laughs> Say the global dimension, before we show the video, the global dimension of this is very important. I mentioned our work in Africa, we also have launched and will be admitting the first students in our, in our International School of Biomedical Diagnostics with Arizona State University later this year. But that is only the beginning of a very significant development and uh, access to programs at both DCU and the ASU that will emerge from that. Also in dialogue in the Middle East, you know our strong connections with uh, Princess Nora Bint Abdul Rahman University in Riyadh a very strong and growing link and again there will be online opportunities there but this is not simply about DCU offering out modules and programs to those locations and many others around the world it is also with shared access so that our students uh, registered at DCU can access a, a much wider menu also within the 3U relationship with uh, NUI Manus and RCSI and my colleagues in DPIT again we're creating technologies and platforms which will allow mutual access to programs so all of this is again, you know, it's very important to us, many of you telling the DCU story would know this, being ranked in the top 50 young universities in the world is about many things, it's about the quality of education, it's about the research profile, but it's also about the global recognition. And again, this uh, development today, this uh, commitment to a global perspective on our online platforms and technology and enhanced learning will actually strengthen that as well. So we're very grateful uh, for that uh, perspective as well. My name is Deirdre Hennessy and I studied online at DCU. I completed a Master's in Management and Information System Strategy. I live in Clonakilty and um, it's a great place to live in. I grew up here, I've lived here all my life. I love living in an area where I have loads of space and you can just have your own thoughts and just come out and on a morning, sunny morning, have your cup of coffee outside. I think what attracted me to DCU was um, the flexibility of the course, that it was very much, you know, you could study wherever you wanted and whenever you wanted. In one particular case, I even ventured down to Enchitane Beach. I just loved the place so much that I was able to bring my study down there as well. I found my lectures and tutors to be excellent. They really understood everyone's personal situation. I was even able to build up a personal rapport with a lot of them between Skype and email and everything. You were never afraid to, to ask a question or to contact them at any stage. On one assignment, I was working with um, someone from Dubai. So it turned out that he was actually from Clare, but he was living in Dubai, and we got to know each other really well. And even on our day of our graduation, we got to meet each other. But at that stage, we felt we knew each other. It really shows you can work with people all over the world, um, and you are connected with them. It really has transformed my life. I guess I've learned how to be motivated, how to be so organised. I've even got the opportunity now to, to move abroad, to live and to work. It's going to be a big change for me. Um, I wouldn't think I'd have got the opportunity only having my Masters um, completed from DCU. I would highly recommend DCU Connected. So you get a real sense there of someone whose life has been transformed uh, through education at a distance from DCU and embracing the DCU Connected brand itself. Before I finish, just two things. One is, just in summary, um, as I said, said at, the, at the very start, today's announcement is not simply about a brand launch. It's more, much more than that. It's about a public commitment, a public statement of DCU's commitment to be a hub of innovation 
for technology enhanced learning, online learning itself, to be connected with the world so that the DCU quality of education can actually be transmitted around the world. It's, to, it's about embracing the best of digital technologies so our students, wherever they are in the world, can access a quality DCU education itself. In closing, I also want to thank a number of people and groups who really need to be acknowledged because all of you know whenever you come to an event such as this, so much is involved behind the scenes and actually uh, drawing it all together to give the polished finish. Uh, can I thank Professor Mark Brown and his team, um, particularly senior colleague Seamus Fox and uh, Mark Glynn. Uh, you know in particular for Seamus and Mark Glynn how, how associated they've been with the evolution of this activity at DCU over many decades and I think it's important that their contribution to this and embracing of it because change is, is all, often challenging but Seamus I know you've been an enthusiastic uh, support of this and I think that's that's wonderful to see. Can I thank the students, uh, dear Dr. Patrice and Michael, Michael Strumland Dock, and that's purely coincidental that he's, that he's there, um, are the public face of DC Connected, thank them. Can I thank Theresa Murray and her team in communications and marketing, and, and Mark Brown commented many times to me how well that engagement worked in terms of coming up with this brand. The staff in the National Institute for Digital Learning here at DCU and particularly those people in the Open Education Unit, which we formerly known as OSCO. Uh, uh, it's been wonderful to see your enthusiasm in embracing this new future of online learning, distance learning, digital learning at DCU itself. Thank you for your positivity and, and embrace of, of this. Uh, can I thank AAD, our, our media agency as well, for supporting with this. And finally, can I thank all of you for coming out in such numbers this morning to mark this very significant uh, event and very significant milestone in the evolution of DCU as an institution that actually makes a difference, not just in Ireland, but around the world. Vermont. Graham, thank you very much for that. Um, I'd now like to call upon uh, Mark Brown to speak to us about uh, the DCU Connected. Thank you very much, Billy, and uh, just extend my greetings and welcome to everyone. Uh, there are a few seats, if people would just like to take a moment to uh, take a seat if you want to uh, ease your legs, but um, it's really overwhelming to see so many people here, I think, today, which really is, for me, even though I've had a very short history here at SU, a very significant day in the history of um, the university. I also think that this is actually quite a significant day at the national level, that there is some national significance in what we're doing here at DCU. And I want to share uh, three points, if you like. Uh, firstly, Deirdre's story for me reminds just how important higher education is and how much it matters. She shared some of the very real personal benefits that have arisen from her study. Importantly, uh, Deirdre did not have the choice of studying on a traditional campus, the choice of transforming her own life by advancing study through more traditional means, through, through if you like, uh, that full-time on-campus experience that we still tend to think of as the dominant metaphor for university education. I think the um, related point I want to make is that higher education matters not just for individuals, but it also has a significant public benefit. And I think this is very important for us to remember at these sorts of times where uh, higher education is very much being challenged. There's an overwhelming body of evidence that shows the benefits, the public and private benefits of higher education. But it's the public ones that I think are really important for us to remember at this time. There are economic benefits, such as the OECD and documenting the return on investment. And you can dispute these sorts of figures and I won't spend time interpreting them. But we know from the literature that people who go on to study, who pursue higher education, earn more, actually pay more taxes. They stay in permanent work longer, place far less demand on the welfare system and support, and so on. There are also wider societal benefits as graduates are healthier, 
Their children go on to become better educated. And they also, we know, go on to make a much greater contribution to their local communities and civic participation more generally. Now, importantly, the private and public benefits of higher education, well documented, actually have no difference in terms of the delivery mode. So students who are studying, as we saw with DEDRA, are a subset of those students who make those sorts of contributions to our societies. The second point I want to make is that it really leads me to how DEDRA's story is reminding us of just how important it is in Ireland to have a coherent, a connected, and a contemporary higher education system that gives um, greater recognition or recognises perhaps more than we do now the benefits that come from flexible provision, flexible models of teaching and learning. The launch of DCU Connected I think is our response to what I believe is a serious gap in the flexible provision of education in Ireland. We know from HEA data and recent reports on the issue that in comparison to other countries, Ireland has a relatively low percentage of part-time learners who often make up uh, the students who are attracted to study through alternative means. 16% depending on how you want to cut the pie on um, the different parts of the sector. In a similar vein, the number of students officially reported and I emphasise officially reported in HEA data as learning through a flexible mode, is very low. In fact, incredibly low. 2.7% in um, this measure uh, under the definition of distance education. I want to argue that ignoring this issue is far greater than the cost of actually implementing the recommendations of the national strategy. Um, and it's useful, I think, to remind us about the national strategy and those recommendations at this time. So DCU Connected is very much linked to national um, thinking as well. The recognition of more flexible models of teaching and learning, I would argue, is central to the growth of human capital and ultimately the um, long-term prosperity of Ireland. There are clear economic benefits and productivity benefits that come from the ability for people to learn flexibly, part-time perhaps or full-time, while still in employment. And I should add, whilst paying taxes. My third point is that DCU Connected extends the mission of transforming lives and societies, as Green has already uh, mentioned, beyond Ireland. In fact, I think this image comes from one of the examples, the African Initiative. It has important, DC Connected has an important international dimension that I believe positions Ireland as a responsible global citizen in uncertain times in the new digital world in a way that will help us to address some of the major challenges but also the major opportunities facing humanity. While there will be many DCU connected courses that provide a unique Irish perspective on the world, we are committed to working with strategic partners, and Brent alluded to this already, through online and blended provision to provide local solutions for local problems. Most importantly, DCU connected, most importantly, DCU connected is not simply a proxy for delivering or pumping online learning through the internet around the world, there's a much deeper philosophy underpinning what we're doing here today. So at this point, having uh, shared with you a little sermon, if you like, I now want to um, take the opportunity to reveal the dedicated website that will be available with the marketing campaign on Monday. This is a new website, it um, is, uh, if you like, in parallel to the current DCU website, there will be high level links to this, but one of the interesting initiatives or developments that arose from working in a very dynamic team is we decided the significance of what we were doing needed its own digital space. 
Um, I won't spend too long here. Um, you can probably see again how we're using our connected learners to really amplify the nature of this brand. Um, just talking you through very briefly, uh, sort of what is DCU Connected, you'll capture, uh, the website captures some of the essence of the philosophy that you've heard already um, this morning. Um, our connected uh, courses, undergraduate, postgraduate, notably you might see also short courses. And we hope that, um, and I can't say too much at this point, but we'll have another exciting announcement at some stage hopefully not too far away, about our commitment to the provision of customised and online short courses as well. Um, some of you might think of those as MOOCs. Um, I think we have a slightly deeper and broader philosophy. And then, as alluded, the international, more than alluded actually, as crucial to this brand, central to the brand, the international dimension. Our website gives some quite rich case studies of some of the initiatives that we're already doing at DCU to help transform lives and societies, both within and beyond Ireland. And um, at this point, I want to My introduce one of those. My name is Emma O'Brien. I'm the Education, Outreach and Entrepreneurship Manager here at the Biomedical Diagnostics Institute, which is hosted by Dublin City University. And I'm the Project Coordinator for the new International Masters in Biomedical Diagnostics. Dublin City University and Arizona State University have had a very strong strategic relationship for a number of years and there are a number of very exciting projects in development but one that I am particularly involved in is the development of the International Masters in Biomedical Diagnostics and we will have cohorts of learners in DCU and cohorts of learners in Arizona State University. And really what we're doing is we're using new technologies, blended learning, to bring both cohorts of students together. The diagnostics industry is one of the fastest growing industries globally. And the programme involves our learners finding out about the science and technology that underpins biomedical diagnostics. We're all about developing very small miniaturised diagnostic devices that will enable the detection of earlier stages of diseases. And really through the development of this international master's programme and through the use of connected learning, blended learning and new technologies, we're developing a new type of graduate, a very rounded, adaptable graduate. So this is a really exciting programme. It's a really exciting opportunity for both our learners here in DCU and our learners in Arizona State University because it really globally connects both cohorts of students. So it's not just about developing an international programme for the sake of it, it's about really developing graduates that will be much, much more adaptable to industry or whatever they decide to go on to when they actually finish their degree or their master's programme. One other um, example, uh, already alluded to as well, but let's add a little bit more flesh, if you like, um, in our um, business school in Princess Nora in Saudi Arabia. My name is John McMacken. I'm the director for the Centre for Executive International Programmes here in the DCU Business School. The partnership we have with Princess Nora University involves a delivery of two undergraduate programmes, a BSc in International Finance and a BSc in marketing innovation and technologies. Up to 140 students per year can join these programs and will study at Princess Noor but be taught by DCU Business School faculty. They will receive both a, a DCU uh, degree and a, a degree from Princess Noor University in Saudi Arabia. A core component of what we're doing with PNU is not just the delivery of the programs but as we're doing it um, to transfer the knowledge and the capability uh, to deliver it themselves. Uh, once we're finished. And Senator Ardeen is particularly committed to ensuring that that part of our contract is fulfilled and also in line with our mission of transforming lives and societies. The difficulty for, the, for Princess Noor and for Saudi Arabia is that because it doesn't have the depth of academic development that uh, we would have and the history of it, they don't simply have the faculty. So how we could contribute to that was to establish standards that would enable them to achieve world-class uh, uh, business education standards within a relatively short time frame. They chose DCU particularly with that in mind. When we asked them after we'd got to know them a little bit why they picked us, in conversation with us they realised that we have faculty here who were here when the university started. One of the key 
considerations in, in deciding when, whether we could do this and whether we wish to do this as a priority was to what extent it was consistent with our mission to tran of transforming lives and societies. Our strong sense is that it, it is a, a prime example of how we can do that. And one final example, I won't play a video here, but this is an initiative where we're contributing to nursing education in Malawi. Um, it's not over yet. There is just one other some, thing I need to reveal. We are actually introducing, I won't say we're launching, we're introducing another brand this morning. I want to share with you um, that we've got an exciting development that relates to the digital learning environment that really underpins the connected experience for those students who are studying, whether it be around Ireland or elsewhere in the world, but also for our on-campus students. I want to introduce just a little taster of what that brand is, and there'll be another occasion where we are more appropriately share more information. Loop. This is the brand that we've come across, that we've decided after very careful consideration to shift the focus away from digital, digital learning, from technology, from references to the technology, to Moodle or Adobe Connect, any of these technologies, to shift it away to better reflect the nature of the learning experience that we want to provide for students. All of our students under this overarching brand, will be in the loop. They will be part of the loop. They're going to play a key role in making and maintaining and actually enhancing the loop. So more to come um, on another occasion about loop, but it's very connected to our thinking, no pun intended, or perhaps pun intended, too connected. The last thing before I um, hand back to Billy that I just want to acknowledge is um, most of you will be aware that I've come from New Zealand and um, I want to acknowledge the fact that uh, my previous line manager and uh, boss you could say is actually with us today all the way from Australia where she is now. She's just recently retired as the uh, Vice President of Academic and International for Massey University. I identified you right at the back there, Professor Ingrid Day. So it's great to have you Thank you very much, everyone. My name is Michael Connolly and I studied a degree in information technology as an off-campus student at DCU. I enjoy living in Dundalk. I'm back living where I grew up. Up until early 2008, I was working full-time in, in Dublin and unfortunately at that time I was made redundant. In order to give myself an edge, I knew I had to go and do uh, something, some further education. The option that DCU provided was that um, I was able to manage my own time. I was able to manage the course in my own way. The tools that were provided were fantastic. Flexibility of learning off campus was so important to me because it allowed me to carry on working, which I need to do. Um, it allowed me to carry on my music, which is a, a side career, if you like. I was studying here in the house, I was studying in the library. It's probably fair to say that even though uh, you're not on campus, you're probably interacting with students and tutors. Uh, more in terms of the work that you're doing. So in a strange sort of a way, the online platform allowed me to be more connected to my fellow students, more connected to the tutors. DCU had a fantastic reputation to my mind, and once I started studying there, that reputation was well justified. It transformed my life to, to the point that it has opened up a whole uh, load of new possibilities to me um, that I might not have considered before. So there we've heard from uh, Michael Conley, another of uh, our students, and uh, now I'd like to call upon Professor Veronica No to say a few words. I'm absolutely delighted and honoured to be um, a visiting professor here at DCU, and it's always great to have an excuse to come back to Dublin, of course. And I'm really enjoying working with uh, Mark and the team and seeing things, how, how things are developing. And I think Mark, you've achieved a huge amount in a very short 
uh, amount of time. I think it's a really interesting and challenging time for higher education. And I think DCU is very well placed to take things forward through the new brand, through Connected and The Loop. Technologies clearly have amazing potential in terms of providing our learners with fantastic interactive multimedia, a plethora of ways in which they can communicate and collaborate. We're training our students for a complex, dynamic and changing environment. Our students will be going into jobs that don't even exist at the moment. We need to have learning that is transformative in terms of lives and society, that equips our learners to move beyond content recall to critical thinking, problem solving, and agile and flexible learning. And I think that is very evident and at the heart of what the new Connected uh, programme is about. I think it's a major initiative, uh, underpinned by the very strong new institute um, that Mark is heading up, uh, and a very vibrant and exciting team uh, working with him. I think it really does link both to the uh, heart of the mission of DCU, but also, as Green pointed out, fits in very, very much with the current uh, national strategy um, in, in terms of Ireland's and the importance of increasing uh, DL provision and flexible learning. It's very important, not only in an Irish context, but internationally, and I like the uh, slogan, whether you're learning in Sligo, Seville or Shanghai, I think that's great. Um, but also, people like Tony Bates claim that if we need to meet the provision of future learners, we should be building one brick and mortar institution every week. So clearly, flexible learning, e-learning is um, the way of the future. And finally, I'll just leave you with one statistic. UNESCO estimate that there are more than 10 million learners who can't afford formal educational offerings. And I think the kind of flexibility possible through the Connected Programme and through the kind of things that Mark mentioned in terms of short courses is the way of the future. So I wish Mark and the team every success and I look forward very much to working with them in the coming months. Thank you. Another of uh, our students, uh, Patrice. My name is Patrice Brennan, and I did a BA in Humanities with DCU. I love living in the country, I love the quiet, I love the isolation of it, but that hasn't hindered me returning to education, and that's what I love about DCU, that I'm not, I'm not restricted and I'm not limited by where I live. My lifestyle is, is actually very busy. I work full time and I've got three young children, so I needed to find a course and an option that fitted in with both work and my children. The online learning platform in DCU gave me the flexibility to be able to connect with my tutors and also with my peers. I used to study mainly in my own sitting room with my laptop on my lap. Difficult enough, but I found myself being very comfortable in my own surroundings, in my own sitting room. It's where I felt relaxed. I do retreat to our study, which is actually a radio room. My husband is very much into amateur radio. When I'm studying, I can hear this constant Morse code in the background, which I have become so accustomed to now that I find I need it, almost need it, to study. As a family, we've become more open, more questioning. And even my children, which I love to see, my children question everything. And that has all come from my education, educating them. DCU has changed my life without a doubt. Um, I have more confidence, I'm more self-assured. DCU Connected has opened every door for me. And uh, now I'd like to go on uh, Seamus Fox to say a few words. Thanks Billy and thank you all for coming here today. Um, Usually, you know, when you have a, a launch of a brand, the, the next question is, well, what happens next? And I want to talk just a few minutes about what, what, what's going to happen from here. The first thing is that uh, starting next Monday, we've got a very extensive uh, marketing campaign, uh, appropriate enough for one that's doing online digital learning. Most of the, um, the campaign will be a, a, a digital one. You Google AdWords, websites, etc. For those of you who are well used to, you know, sort of booking a flight or booking a, um, a hotel room and then going and finding that every site you go to gives you that one, 
naturally, I'm well used to looking at online programs, and it's going to be very nice for me to, uh, from next Monday, to see the DCU connected um, and come up and hopefully follow me everywhere where I'm going. Um, we're not only doing the, uh, the uh, digital, we're also doing some of the traditional ones. We've got radio uh, starting. There'll be a nationwide campaign starting next Monday. Uh, also outdoor, um, bus, rail, um, you'll see us on, we travel on dark and bus stops and whatever. Um, and it'll be very much um, working with uh, these people, the, um, the, uh, the, the three students who are the key to our uh, campaign. Um, so this is what you'll hopefully be seeing um, as you move around the country. And um, yeah, they're very much these, these uh, really concentrating on the fact that this is about not just connecting with students who are given that flexible online delivery, but as we've heard already about the transformative impact, and hope you've seen from the videos the real transformative impact it can have on um, for our students, the, particularly the adult learning student. Um, the next thing that will happen after today will be a lot of work internally. Uh, this is already well underway, working with colleagues. Um, and a lot of you here already will know that we've been talking to you and working with you. But I'd like to put out a, a request of anybody we haven't talked to here, both in the DCU community and St. Patrick's, Matter Day, uh, in Rathmines and the CIC. Um, just come and talk to us. Uh, anything that you think will be under the you know, online programs, uh, short programs, uh, short courses, uh, international ones. We'll probably be in contact with you, but at least I'm asking you as a to request here. One key part there, of course, is if you're thinking of anybody thinking of putting a course into an online and flexible delivery, part of the National Institute of Digital Learning, of course, is the Teach Enhancing Unit, and that's a very much part of its mission to help with people going online. Um, that's what I have to say. I would like to just finish off with, again, uh, a number of thank yous. Uh, Brian has already thanked her three students, uh, Patrice Brennan, Darren Hennessy and Michael Connolly. Um, what was very interesting is that they, um, all three very readily agreed, uh, once we approached them, to be part of the uh, campaign. Unfortunately, we were actually hoping all three would be here today, but unfortunately, for various reasons, they can't. But I promise to give them a personal thank and send them the video, <laughs> which we will do after the launch. So again, thank you, Patrice, uh, Michael, and Deirdre. Um, I want to just also thank the staff of the National Digital Learning, particularly in the Urban <laughs> Education Unit, who helped organize today's event. Um, Amanda, Amanda Birmingham, uh, Patrick, who's doing our video, Shirley, Susan, and many others. And, but one person in particular I would like to thank, I'm just looking for, is Michelle. Michelle has been absolutely, Michelle Smith, where have you? Oh, I've done it back <laughs> uh, Michelle has been absolutely central, not just to organizing today's things, but about uh, developing the whole uh, DCU Connected brand. If she's got a very keen eye, I can tell you, she'll point out different shades that I wouldn't see, what different meanings. Uh, also, as you can see, there's been a huge amount of work on into developing the campaign, um, doing the, we have a perspectives coming out the, the website, and particularly the video. So I'd like to send, send a special thanks to, to Michelle for all her huge work, and we really appreciate it. Um, again, <laughs> Again, uh, both Brian and uh, Mark have alluded to the work of Theresa and Maureen and her team in comms and marketing for Theresa, where she's... <laughs> oh, Theresa. <laughs> uh, thank you. I just want to say, Theresa, it's been great working with you and your team in the last couple of months and with uh, AAD, uh, the agency. Uh, and uh, I think, like a lot of these matters, if you want a, a job done well, call in the professionals, and these were the professionals. And with that, I'd like to hand over just to Mark for a final thing to add on to that. Thank you, Seamus. Uh, I do need to acknowledge my team, uh, and I thought it was appropriate to do it right at the end here. Seamus, Mark being mentioned, but the whole team, Michelle in particular. Um, I particularly though, also like to thank our President Breen for the support that he's given us throughout this 
Um, Teresa and the team have been just outstanding to work with and I would encourage um, anyone within DCU to develop that kind of relationship with the people who know better than we do about marketing. Um, Gronya, thank you for coming. Um, your contribution um, is very significant for us and we know it continues. Um, there are bound to be others that I should acknowledge. Perhaps I do need to just recognise for a very rare occasion my wife is here and so she has proven to be the sample of one that has given me feedback on some of our ideas. So thank you, Denise. On that note, um, I'll hand over finally to Billy. We almost um, have forgotten probably one of the most significant things in, um, in a conversation last week. Uh, this group often gets ignored, they told us, so it was really crucial that I actually added a slide for AAD for um, Johnny and Scotty and Kevin, Scott and Kevin um, have just been magnificent sitting in the back there, um, not only working through our comps and marketing but going to a media agency. Um, they've really brought uh, a whole touch to this they haven't just brought us the brand, uh, it's been part of the philosophy you've heard. So thank you very much and we look forward to keeping on working with you. Just before we uh, finally conclude, uh, Brian would like to say a few concluding remarks. Thanks, Billy. You'd be glad to know they were very, very brief. Um, I just thought, again, uh, there was one person I, I meant to acknowledge in terms of the, the national dimension of this. I'm delighted that uh, Lewis Purser from the IUA was kind enough to join us here this morning because, as, uh, as Mark uh, clearly articulated earlier, it, this, when we use the title NIDL, National Institute for Digital Learning, this is not simply a DCU uh, resource. This is something where we want to, to actually uh, raise all boats and digital learning in Ireland itself and I think through the IOA that's a, another important arm of that. So Lewis, thank you uh, for, for being with us here this morning. Um, also colleagues from DC Ryan Academy for Entrepreneurs, you know Anne Horn and Owen Stack and uh, Arthur O'Malley and colleagues are here with us. And that arm of DCU itself, I think there are significant synergies in the whole area of innovation and entrepreneurship that can benefit from a DCU Connected and NID itself. Um, so today I think a very significant you, Lots of thank yous, and I won't reiterate those again, I think, but it is a very significant day for us. And, you know, a piece of language that's in our press release, and I think it came from Grania. We're moving USCO, which was a strong brand for DCU for many decades, from really the periphery of DCU to the heart of it. Really now, digital learning, distance learning, online flexible learning is now a part of DCU through a new brand, DCU Connected. And I think that is very significant indeed. And my final remarks, uh, you, you may have noted uh, from Mark's, Mark Brown's accent, he's from New Zealand, I really couldn't let the week go by without mentioning a wonderful Irish <laughs> lady. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mark, but he's become more Irish now because he started to say, we had a great win against the All Blacks, didn't we? <laughs> Some of you may not know, but a good number of that team were actually based at DCU and we'd be promoting and, and making some press coverage of that in the coming weeks. And uh, the, the, the Irish Rugby Football Union, I have a few ladies, sevens team for the Rio uh, World Cup is based at DCU. And to say a good number of that team that was successful against New Zealand and the US, and hopefully will go even further in France in the World Cup, uh, we, we are, are here at DCU. So they're DCU connected as well. On that note, thank you all very much indeed. Thank you all for uh, being part of this event this morning. I'd like to invite you all to join us for a cup of tea, a cup of coffee outside. Thank you very much indeed.